blocking and confounding in design of experiments. Think about this simple design situations. We have two factors A and B and then for each of these factors we have two levels for each factor. To complete one full replication we need four different experiments with four homogeneous experimental units. Now if we need let's say three replications of this design and we can only make four samples from a batch, homogeneous batch, um, or from a process or a place. We can only, we have limitations on the amount of raw material we can collect. So let's assume that we can only collect four samples from each batch or each process or each places. So if we need three replications, we'll need three batches or blocks, and they are treated as blocks. Different process does not necessarily mean non-homogeneous all the time. Um, they're not so different that they could be treated as a factors, so then they are called block. They are very similar, but not exact same, um, like an identical twin, which requires for an experimental unit. Now, this is a very simple situation where we have only two factors, two level each, now, when we have a long list of variables that we want to study and we won't be able to find homogeneous experimental units or um, from one single batch, then um, there should be multiple blockings. Now, confounding on the other hand, think about this same situation. Let's assume that we can only collect four samples from a batch. Then for this two cube design, two levels for three factors, which needs total eight experiments. However, we can only collect four samples, four experimental units from a batch. Then we have to run these experiments from two batches and they should be treated as two blocks. Now there is a systematic way of doing all uh, this blocking and confounding, which you can check in the openeducator.com in module 6 under the DOE design of experiments.